Welcome back, everybody. Today we are talking about smart objects and um, mockups using Adobe Photoshop CC. Um, let me open up a mockup file that already exists and we will demonstrate how to use it. Um, so I'm just going to drag and drop this PSD file into Photoshop up the layers and we can see what we're dealing with. So what a mock-up file is, as you can probably tell just by the way this image looks, is a visual image in which a company, organization, or whatever will take it and replace um, part of the image with uh, whatever they would like. So in this case we have a laptop screen so somebody could replace it with a website or a program or something like that. Uh, Mock-ups exist not only for computers but also for signage, coffee cups, t-shirts, anything where you would want to preview how a specific image would like on a certain file or if you want to like if you're an app developer and you want to be able to showcase how your app looks um, you could find a picture of a phone screen and put a screenshot of your app on it. Um, the way this works is in Photoshop, you have to utilize smart objects. Now, the reason that this file was saved as a PSD file was to keep our layers. And if we look at our layers over here, we see what's going on. Um, not sure about this layer up at the top, um, but here, we, that one, yeah, makes a little bit of a color adjustment. There's an, also a layer called color effects. Uh, that's kind of for the compositing. Then we have a smart object right here, and at the bottom we actually have uh, the background file. So as we are talking about smart objects currently, um, this that's what really uh, mock-up files focus on. So you notice that it says double click here as the layer name. What we're actually going to do is exactly that. We're going to double click not where it says the text, but on the smart object thumbnail. And if I do that, we're going to say don't resolve because we don't have that font. Um, it will open up just the smart object layer into its own Photoshop document. Now, one thing to pay attention to, uh, the current extension for this file, it's not a PSD anymore, it's a PSB. It's because smart objects, as we've already discussed, are infinitely, well, they can, they can be expanded to be larger sizes. And that's what PSB stands for. You kind of think of it in your head as Photoshop Big. It's for a file that has technically more than 30,000 pixels on either dimension. Um, but here's how this works. I'm going to get rid of these two text layers and let's go to the internet. We'll pull up Google Images. Whoops, let's try that again. Images.google.com. And we are going to search for something. Let's search for cats. We'll hit tools, change our size to large, and make sure that we are getting um, images that we can legally use. Let's go to this cat right here. We'll open it up. Let's kind of zoom in on the cat. Can we copy it from here? Copy the image, go back to Photoshop, edit, paste. We'll probably have to resize it a little bit. It's actually bigger than we needed it to be. Resize it. We're keeping the proportionality intact. Place the cat right there. We'll use some text and we'll just make this cats.com right up at the We'll put it in the center, actually. A little bit difficult to read, so what we can do is, to make it easier to read there, we will add a stroke around the edges of the text. Let's put it on the outside. And this technically should all be review at this point for everyone. Now watch this. I'm going to go to File, Save, and then File, Close. And what will happen is Photoshop will update the mock-up file with the adjustments that we had just made to that smart object layer. So it should look exactly like this. Let's see, let's do this again. Here's a t-shirt mockup. Um, once again, saved in .psd. We have a bunch of stuff right here. And if we open up these folders, we can find our smart objects. All we have to do here, we should just have to double click the smart object layer, we're going to get rid of that. And let's place something else. So I'm going to say File, Place Embedded. And let's just search up Logo. I'm sure I have a Logo file here somewhere. Let's search ATC Logo. Oops, I hit the wrong button. And here we go. I'm going to place 
this. We'll stretch it out so it's a little bit bigger. I'm assuming this guideline is there because it's telling me where to place it. Um, I would also, for this one, it looked like the original design, the ink was white. So I would probably add a color overlay to my layer here just to make this one white as well. That's the layer style, the color overlay. Uh, now, once again, if I hit File, Save, and then File, Close, it should go back and update. Oh, now here's a good learning opportunity. So maybe I made that a little bit too big. Still, check out how it automatically updates the shadows. If I want to fix it, just double click the thumbnail of this art object layer again, resize it down, let's center it, use those little guides there, File, Save, File, Close, Let's see now, still a little bit big. Um, I would say they should probably have some guides on the sides of this one, um, but that's okay. We'll adjust this, make sure it's centered, file save, file close, and there we go. So now we can actually have a, a pretty good mock-up of what that shirt really looks like. So you've seen here how these mock-up files work. This is a finished result. This one's a little bit more in-depth than the other one, mostly because of these layers that are actually applying the shadowing um, to the actual file that we're placing on it, this other one that we had open. Uh, maybe a little bit simpler. What's interesting about this one is how it transforms um, the edges of the screen to perfectly match the angled laptop there. Uh, so let's close both of these and let's make one ourselves. So what we're doing for this project is we are creating our own mock-up file. So we need something that either has signage, like a billboard, um, and we need like a phone screen, or we need a laptop screen, something like that. So I'm just gonna search phone and see what pops up. Uh, let's actually search and holding phone. It already has large, and it also has labeled for non-commercial reuse. Um, so we've got, we're getting quite a few good results here. This one might work well. This one would work pretty well as well. Um, I'm actually going to use this one right here. So we're going to open it up. Pexels is a great website to use for uh, public domain images. Let's zoom in on this. Copy it. Go back to Photoshop. Now we'll say create new. You can also say file new. Uh, make sure to select clipboard. Clipboard should be the exact same dimensions as what you have currently copied. Wait for the blank space and then you can paste your image. Okay, so what we're going to do is create our own mock-up file. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to create a blank layer. And in that blank layer, I'm going to just kind of make a shape that's generally about the same size, it doesn't have to be perfect, about the same size as uh, the area that you're wanting to fill. So what I'm looking at right here is the phone screen. Um, and so I tried to make this just generally about that same size and shape. And I'm going to fill it with just a color. I'm going to fill it with black. Doesn't really matter what you fill it with. And then what we're going to do is we're going to convert it into a smart object. Now it's important to do that at this step, right? So we made a blank layer, we got a selection that's about the same size as the screen, we filled it in with that, uh, with a color, really any color, doesn't really matter, and then we converted the layer into a smart object. We can tell it's a smart object because we have the smart object layer here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform it. Now, what I like to do is just hit Command or Control T to pull up the, um, the uh, transform tools here. Uh, and then hold Command or Control, and you can drag your corner anchor points to where they're supposed to go. Um, that's one way to do it. Another way to do that would be to go to Edit, Transform, and then Distort, which basically allows you to do that manually without having to hold Command or Control. You can distort it. Uh, it's probably a good idea to zoom in, knock your opacity down, so you can really see where the edges of your phone screen are. And we're just adjusting this to kind of try to match the phone. People sell these on the internet for good money. Now for yours that you're making, you can also use your own. You could just take a picture of a phone, somebody using it. We're definitely off on our angle there. 
and we are just mat trying our best to match up our lines. Okay, that's pretty good. We'll knock the opacity of our phone back up. Now, you, sh you probably noticed there's one part of this that we're going to have to adjust, and that is where the thumb and the palm of this woman's hand overlap with the phone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a mask. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, and I'm just going to paint black with my brush on the parts that I want to get rid of. Non-destructive editing is what masking is. Okay. So I went over it a little bit here. So now I can switch to paint white. <clears throat> and we'll just paint the screen back in where it's supposed to go. Move up here, switch to painting black again. Paint the thumb back in. Now we're switching to painting white. So we can paint the screen back in. Knocked out a little bit of her thumb. Let's put it back. There we go. Masking goes back to week, what, two or three? Way back when, when we were talking about Photoshop stuff. Um, all right, so let's let's demonstrate how this would work. So I'm going to change the name of this layer. Let's see. We'll just call it double click. You can really call it whatever. Um, you don't have to call it anything. We're going to leave our mask there, even though it looks a little bit complicated. I'm going to double click the smart object layer, which opens this up just the same way anything else would. And let's let's throw something on there. So I'm just going to search phone screen. You can search wallpaper. You can search whatever. And let's, let's search phone screen shot. Hopefully we will only get back appropriate things. Let's say tools, let's say large, usage rights, non-commercial. And we'll find one, let's try this one. Not sure what's going on there, it's in a different language, but for our purposes, that's fine. It's only opened up Lightroom. Okay, um, back in Photoshop, we will paste that screenshot, resize it to fit our screen. It might not fit perfectly, but that is okay. Make sure it's right there. File, save, file, close. And it should go back and update our smart object with that screenshot. Um, now that actually looks pretty good. If you wanted to, you could knock down the opacity a little bit so it wasn't quite um, just so bright. I might also zoom in here and mask out the corners because I noticed when we were in there that it had slightly rounded corners instead of those sharp edged corners that our file actually had. The nice thing is that your mask and also your, your distortion will save. Uh, and then for anytime you're making a composited image, which is what we're doing, it's always a good idea to stack a couple of adjustment layers on top because it, as we've already said, it applies those same adjustments uh, to all of the images that are underneath it. So if we shift the cyans a little bit, uh, or if we shift the highlights to a little bit more blue, it will make the highlights more blue in both the phone screen and the rest of the image that we have there. Yeah, so we can put that there. We can also maybe make another one where we maybe make it a little bit darker, brighter. Overall, we'll throw those two adjustment layers in a folder. We'll call it um, effects and say okay. So now we have our composited image. Watch, if we wanted to change again, all we have to do is double click that layer. Um, let's throw something else on there. Let's just say FaceTime screenshot. Don't like any of these. Let's, let's just say not filtered by license and see what we get. Okay, we're calling Jacob Moore apparently. Copy it, go back. Paste it, resize it. For yours, when you guys are creating yours, I just want to make sure that it's something that can actually be used. File save, file close, it should go back and it will update it automatically. Let's see what it looks like without the effects. It looks good pretty much either way. I do think uh, our effects help it a little bit. If we're done with this one, we say save as. And then we're going to save it as a PSD file. We'll just say mock-up with phone. Uh, PSD because that keeps our layers intact. If we save that as a JPEG, uh, what it would do is it would flatten all of our layers and it would not be a usable mock-up file. So we will save it as a PSD. Okay, let's try that one more time. Let's do that again. You can try it with a book. These are images we talked about earlier. Let's go to this one. So we'll drag it in here. 
We'll just walk through this process again. Blank layer. Throw something in there that generally fits the size and shape. Fill it with something. I'm going to fill mine with black. Edit fill is the same as uh, the hotkey I did, shift delete. Um, turn it into a smart object. We'll do it this way. Layer, smart objects, convert, uh, and then transform it or distort it specifically, which is a type of transformation. I'm going to knock my opacity down so I can really see what I'm doing. Grab these corners. Make sure they are matching up. Now, once again, you do not have to do yours with the phone. Uh, I'm not sure why I did a phone. You could do a laptop screen. You could do a t-shirt. You could do a coffee mug. Whatever you would like for your mock-up. Adjusting it to try and fit pretty perfectly. You could probably zoom in even more than I'm doing. Okay, knock the opacity back up. Once again, we have those rounded corners. So I'm zooming in, made a mask, and I am just getting rid of the hard edges on the mock-up layer that we've added in. Okay, we'll zoom back out. We'll call this double, whoops, spell it correctly. Double click, and let's try it out again. We'll drop that Jacob Moore image on there, file save, file close, and we've got it. Uh, now, I would always say it's just gonna look better if we add in a couple of adjustment layers on top to make our composite a little bit more believable, and I would encourage you to do the same whenever you're compositing. It's always just a good idea. Um, that might be a bit too much in terms of color, so we can knock it down a little bit. Let's not do another one of those. So a slight warming filter. Maybe we'll do curves. Pull it up, pull it down. Let's push some high, let's get rid of the blues and the highlights a little bit. And there we go. We can throw all of those in a folder and just call it FX. Save it as a PSD file. Um, phone mockup, maybe with your name um, in the spot where it's supposed to go. And you've got your mockup. So that is how you can make a mockup file. I know the battery's about to die. Uh, out of an image. Uh, which is what I want for your project this week. Create a usable mock-up.